On today's episode of What's Going On With Shipping, that doesn't look so stable. Hi, I'm your host, Sal Mercagliano. Wow, uh, third incident we've had now. We've had a whole series of incidents involving ships and ship accidents. And I know some people are going to be sitting there going, wow, is this just a plethora of problems with global shipping? I go back to Allianz that did a report last year that showed the number of ship accidents and incidents are down. It's just that we have a lot more visibility today, and you as consumers are much more aware of what is happening. But let's go ahead and talk about this incident that happened, and let's recap some of the past incidents and give you some updates on them. If you're new to the channel, take a moment, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell, so you'll be alerted about new videos as they come out. So this is the story as reported over at Splash 24-7. I have a little problem with the, with the title here because the ship did not capsize. But according to this, ship capsizes at an Indian port. This vessel, a uh, general cargo vessel called the Sea Express, part of Express Shipping. These are small feeder vessels, and by feeder vessels, usually ships of about 1,000 TEU that go to ports and shuffle containers between ports. They get into the smaller ports, they'll go to larger ports, pick up containers, and bring them in. And this took place in the port of Mundra in India. And we're gonna go into some more detail here and talk about this incident in a second. I just wanna give a quick recap of two stories we just covered this week. So story number one here deals with the Glory, which was a bulk vessel that was uh, grounded in the Suez Canal. That ship is now out, out in the Red Sea, as you see here from marine traffic, was southbound in the Red Sea and heading out. So obviously Glory did its assessment, realizing there was no damage to it. The ship is heading for Singapore and eventually for China with a load of corn that came out of Ukraine. The second vessel was this, the MSC Elaine. Did a video on this yesterday, and I'll have the link to both videos up here in the show notes. Uh, you can link to them or down the show notes to get to them. MSC Elaine got out off the southern jetty uh, where it grounded, went out to sea, anchor, it didn't anchor, actually was floating out there, but now has been brought back into the port. And it's in a berth, uh, the very southern berth. And while we don't have an update in news stories about it, what this tells me is they're probably taking containers off of her right now before she heads into a potential dry dock. That would be about the really the only reason I would think that they'd want to take the containers off her. So probably getting her light so that she can head in the dry dock. You don't want to go in a dry dock with containers on board. The, the ships have dry docking plans so that when you go into a dry dock, the, pl the blocks, the big, large wooden blocks have fitted, are there according to weight distributions ba based on a light load, not a loaded, not a fully loaded. And so if the weights are on board with containers, that can cause a problem. So it's not exactly clear what's happening. I would assume that the cargo is coming off MSC Elaine now and cargo will be transferred to other MSC vessels for further distribution while this ship goes off into a dry dock. We'll be monitoring it and see if there's any more details on this. All right, let's look at the uh, situation uh, dealing with this ship that lost stability in the port of Mudras. So this is a video that was uh, included in the story from Splash 24-7. Uh, the vessel, the uh, Sea Express, was built back in 1999, 24 years old, uh, built in China. She's under Express uh, shipping a Panamanian vessel. And what we're hearing from uh, reports, and this is, comes from a story at Container News, an interview with a local ship agency, says this, understand the incident occurred due to an error in calculating ballasting parameters as the vessel was multi-purpose. Sources also said marine movements uh, through the fairway to MICT, this is a terminal, had to be suspended for the recovery of the lost containers. Uh, the quote goes on here, as soon as the port authorities received this information, emergency protocols were, uh, were activated. Uh, it goes on here, according to our standard operating procedure on preparedness, we responded by deploying tugs and other marine and port management teams rushed to the spot. So a couple of images here pulled by Twitter. So one of the things that is apparent in these, video in these images here is that the vessel listed from one side to the other, and this indicates a tender vessel. So when you do stability on a vessel, obviously you wanna get everything level. You want the ship, port and starboard to be level. You don't wanna list at all. This ship is identified as a general 
cargo ship. So based on the report from Container News, what this tells me is down in the hold of the vessel, down the hull inside the vessel here, there's cargo. And obviously that cargo either shifted or what we're getting is the ship is top heavy. There's too much weight up above. And this is a problem we've seen with containers and it's a particular problem for smaller container vessels. If you look at traditional vessels throughout history, most cargo was inside the hull of the vessel, but container ships are different where you can stack containers on deck. And the problem with containers is you never know what the weight of these containers are. Even though they're listed with weights, they're not always accurate. And more importantly, cargo in the containers can shift. How many of you have gotten boxes delivered to your house where the package inside is moved around, it's broken, it may not be packed very well? Well, amplify that on a 20, 40, 45 foot container that weighs 5, 10, 20 tons. And what you get is a ship that has tender stability. In other words, it's top heavy. When ships are top heavy, they'll list to one side and hang there or flop to the other side, which is even more dangerous, I'll tell you. And what you see here is some of those containers spilled off the vessel and into the water. Smaller container vessels, especially feeder vessels like the Sea Express, which is just under 1,000 TEUs, are really susceptible to this type of instability. You see it on bigger container ships. Uh, the big issue we have on larger container ships has to do with a type of motion they get into, parametric rolling. Uh, but in this case, this is a stability issue. We had a case not too long ago where a vessel rolled over at the berth in, I believe it was UAE, and capsized at the berth in a very similar scenario where the vessel was leaning to one side and then the other side and then rolled back to the other side. And it's a really dangerous predicament. Nobody was hurt in this. The vessel did not capsize, but as you see, some containers were lost. This is a big hazard, these containers going in the water, not just for navigation. Uh, they may get Robert Redford in a sailboat, for example. But more importantly, they can spill contaminants into the water. And that is a big problem. And so the port of Mudras is working right now to get these containers lassoed, get them up, hoisted back up onto shore. It's going to be difficult to get them up because they weigh so much more that they're not stable and the potential for the containers to break and crack. So here's the vessel Sea Express in Mudras. We'll go ahead and zoom in here a little bit more, give you some imagery of the port. Here's the position of the port, the Sea Express in Mudras right here, still showing her AIS uh, pinging at the time up against the berth. Obviously, they're trying to rectify the stability issue, which would mean requiring offload the vessel, get into the hold and see what's going on with the cargo there. Again, when they say it's a stability issue, I mean, obviously, you're top heavy, which means either you don't have enough cargo low enough in the hold or you have too much heavy cargo above or a mixture of the both. So a very unique position uh, and again, happens a lot with smaller container ships. The other issue I want to raise here is a story that was put out in G-Captain concurrently here. This is a Bloomberg story. India's trade goal runs into big ship problems. So India is an interesting scenario here because India doesn't have large ports. Uh, the biggest port in the area is actually on the island of Sri Lanka, a separate country off the southeastern coast of India, yet a lot of traffic goes by. But the problem is India's ports are too shallow. They can't handle the large vessels. So you don't get vessels the size of ever a lot, the big uh, ultra large container vessels coming in. Uh, the biggest terminal in India right now, the Nehru uh, Port Trust, lacks the 17 meter draft necessary for it. Uh, Mundra Port has so far been skipped. The largest vessel, the APL Raffle, 17,000 TU, is the biggest vessel to have birthed there. That was back in January of 2022, but it was only about three quarters loaded, it had just under uh, or just over 13,000 TEU. So India is in this big push right now to really grow the port and develop it. And I think that's going to be something we'll see happening with India going forward. Uh, very interesting that this event happens with a feeder vessel in a port because these container terminals are key for India because India lacks a very robust road uh, system. They use those ports along the coast 
extensively, much like you see in Europe and a lot of other places, where you can go into these large ports, gather the containers, put them on smaller vessels, and shift them around. But the feeder vessels do not get the attention. They don't have the support. They don't have the people working on stability in offices outside like the big container ships have. And that's why accidents like this happen. I hope you enjoyed today's video, our third in a string of accidents. I hope you enjoyed the fact I dressed up for you today. First day of classes here at Campbell University. So got to look good, got to make that good first impression. If you want to make a good first impression, hey, how about subscribing to the channel and hitting the bell below? You can go ahead and leave a comment, share it across social media, give it a thumbs up, and if you can, support the page. How do you do that? You can hit the super thanks button below, or you can head on over to Patreon, become a patron of the page, become a monthly or yearly subscriber. Good news for my subscribers, I know I'm delaying getting my uh, Patreon episode out because of just a, a variety of different issues, but it's coming uh, here soon. But I am tarting a class in exactly 45 minutes uh, this semester on world maritime history and I'm going to be doing a version for you the subscribers of what's going on with shipping uh, a weekly class or a weekly uh, video here talking about that class and what we're discussing what we're going over and so I thought it'd be a fun addition as I'm teaching that class here at Campbell University you can be learning about some world maritime history at the same time so next video this is Sal signing off <laughs>